Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It's been a little while, also good morning. So I just got back from vacation and wanted to update you guys with the SSF Righteous Fire character. I apologize ahead of time if the video is a little out of order. I'm just getting back into the, you know, kind of the, the works of things. Um, so let's go ahead and get updated. So we are currently level 95 on our character. Uh, we have acquired our two uh, Void Stones from uh, Exarch and Eater. We got these a little bit ago. I don't not remember if, uh, if I talked about these or not. Uh, I haven't set up a favorite Atlas strategy yet. And we are actually farming white tier maps right now for a little bit. I know that seems kind of odd. It's a strategy I have not done in a long time. And I want to run my philosophy down uh, for you guys. So, this yet. as we all know, I've played lots of Righteous Fire. There's only so much customization you can do from, you know, build to build. But since we found an Eternal Damnation early into our playthrough from Sanctum, uh, I decided I wanted to try out the Lore Weave Eternal Damnation route. Now, the process of Lore Weave Eternal Damnation, I'm just going to go ahead and pull it up for you uh, real fast so you guys can see. So, essentially, what Lore Weave does is lore weave and again i'm sure a lot of you guys know this but for the newer players who don't the main thing we care about here with lore weave is this right here so lore weave is going to set our maximum res at 78 percent which is going to make it so that when we equip our eternal damnation which is minus five res it'll not go past the 78 threshold on top of this this means we can run things like minus max maps uh, and not get affected by it same thing with synthesis maps cortex uh, etc. Uh, not to mention, Lorif has some pretty alright stats on it. It's got a decent life roll, it's got an LA damage roll, it's got an attributes roll, uh, and the armor in general is not going to be that high, but to be fair, my current chest piece only has like 1k armor already, so th this is not too difficult. Um, the biggest thing I'm probably going to do on the tree, at least at first glance, is we don't need the uh, maximum res nodes located here anymore. So I'm going to literally take one, two, three, four, five, and put them into one, two, three, four, and then take the mastery back five. What this trade is effectively doing is uh, we are losing a dex node, but lore weave gives us all attributes. We are losing a little bit of res, but lore weave gives us res. Over here, we are going to get 30% total chaos res, and we're going to get reduced effective curses, uh, which pushes this into a better mapper, I would say. Uh, you also get to completely or uh, completely ignore minus max maps, so I think this is going to be a superior mapping setup. Um, I don't have too many fusings, but that's going to be the goal, is definitely trying to six link it. So the reason why I'm running uh, white tier maps is for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, because we're in SSF and we don't have the best gear, running lower tier maps means I can really just breeze through the maps, right? So this means I can use uh, some magic find gear without hindering my character's performance. So I'm running a Bisco's Leash for a little bit of quantity and a little bit of rarity, also speed. I'm running an item rarity support instead of my uh, efficacy. And I'm running a gold flask at the moment instead of a life flask. Now, this is what my Atlas looks like. and I would not recommend copying it. It's all over the place right now. But I'll explain the purpose of my Atlas. So you'll notice I put Essence on there. And for people who don't know, Essences don't really care about the map tier. They just want to be in the map. Meaning it doesn't matter if you're running Essence in a Tier 1 map or a Tier 16 map, it's virtually the same thing. All of these Essences I've acquired are literally from running white maps. Since the removal of Essence on the crafting bench, it is a lot more difficult to specifically get like our Essence of Horror. So by running and speed running white maps, you're a lot more likely to acquire those. Also remember if you ever get a different one like say Insanity, you can always come over to your uh, Harvest bench you can type in Essence, and if you have a little bit of Blue Essence, you can actually re-roll this into Horror Essences. Note that you cannot do that with these ones, only with these. So these four Corrupted Essences can re-roll into Horror. I applied this method to get the helmet that you see located here. Um, so this helmet can still be crafted further. Um, to craft it further, we would do Suffixes cannot be changed for two Divines. Then we would go ahead and use a Veiled Chaos. Then we craft this modifier located right on this helmet to prevent it from unveiling. And then we hope for a natural plus two unveil. We'll be doing that a little bit later. I've already put four divines into this helmet and they're a little hard to get right now. Although Sanctum is very nice for that. Some of the other things we're doing uh, is we're stocking up logbooks. I don't know how good these logbooks are, but I have quite an abundance of these like 70 logbooks. These are all the ones that we farm from these lower tier maps. 
and then of course uh we put harbinger on so we're stocking up our annuls um i ended up again through farming this method i found a lot of uh quality fire gems just because i'm speeding through my uh my maps ended up getting a tier one dot multi weapon with plus one fire i got really impatient because i didn't want to wait for an imprint so i regaled and hit cold res so now we have a 50 50 gamble coming up later with um bestiary for suffix to prefix but that is for another time um so real fast i'm just gonna go ahead and put in a map and see if i remember how to play it's been like a week I don't think I could die to white tier map, so it should not matter. Uh, let me go ahead and just pop this up. Right. Uh, I also, real fast before I go into that, I don't think I talk too much about Eternal Damnation. The last thing to talk about with Eternal Damnation is gain additional damage reduction equal to half your Chaos Res. So 80% Chaos Res equals 40% reduced or less elemental damage taken. R regardless, it will synergize extremely well with the Juggernaut Ascendancy, um, which is unbreakable because you are massively reducing the impact of the hit, which makes Unbreakable significantly stronger, because the um, the smaller the hit, the more effective your armor is. Also, what's nice is that by using Eternal Damnation, I do not need to pivot into like a very offensive amulet, and since I don't have a good amulet anyway, it doesn't have any damage, this is a really easy solution. I just put on the Eternal Damnation. The only thing that I would need to change is I'm going to try to look for an offensive shield. So that's going to be like an energy shield base shield, trying to get like plus one fire and fire damage on it. Um, what I'm going ahead and looking out for is fractured energy shield shields with uh, fire resistance. I know that sounds weird, but by having a locked in fire resistance mod, when I come over to the crafting bench and I do reforge fire modifier, you can no longer get fire resistance on it. So this is something I'm going to try and see how it ends up working out. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into a real quick map. Oh, I have also decided to try out one thing. It's been heavily requested, but I've never really went ahead and tried it. So I decided to try out self-casting a little bit more, and I actually kind of like it. I'm not going to lie. I, I think when I have my Legacy of Fury on, I will not really do this setup. But what I'm referring to is the following. Instead of doing the standard Hex Touch, Frost Blink, and then Flammability, right now what I did instead is in my gloves where I would normally put my um, my Frost Blink on Life Tap, I put Flammability on Life Tap. So I have Life Tap, Shield Charge, Faster Attacks, Flammability. It's not the smoothest, but it's 0.4 of a second, and when I have Frenzy Charges, that goes even lower. Um, and then with my Frost Blink setup, I just put it over here with my Molten Shell, and I put Arcane Surge. You do not have to do this, but this is what we call like our Flex Gem. We have one extra socket here. Um, you could alternatively put in, you know, your Wave of Conviction, and there's a number of gems I show in the POB, so that's entirely up to you. But this is actually, it feels pretty good pre-Legacy of Fury. Uh, it also feels much better for Sanctum specifically because you're not using your Frost Blink to curse anymore. You're just literally cursing the target. I would do this ritual, but I'll do this after. It's going to take too long. I actually think I forgot an, an egg nest over there. Oh, I don't remember if I actually even got to show it. I, I think I did. Um, so, Lore Weave, again, sorry for the out of order. Lore Weave requires um, five rows of unique rings. This is another benefit of running the lower tier maps, like I was saying, is getting the, the magic find set up to just zip through to try to acquire all of the rings because you need a full inventory to actually make a lore weave. Oop, now I got my lag. Unlucky. Let's reset that. Oh! 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 Well, we could just end the video there. You pretty much get it. There's not really anything special to see, so I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I hope your, your guys' New Year's is uh, starting off strong. Everything is pretty good here. Nothing too bad, so pretty happy. Um, but yeah, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox, except for Sundays. See you guys all later, and thanks for watching.